It was no accident the fatal police shooting of Alton Sterling in Louisiana was captured on video. It was filmed by a group called Stop the Killing that actively tries to get such footage by monitoring police scanners. And the fatal shooting, the fatal police shooting of Philando Castillo in Minnesota, this time it was his girlfriend in the car who captured it on video. What would have happened if um, Diamond Reynolds hadn't broadcast live on Facebook? And if, if we had, had told no a phone? story, if she had what not if, done that, no one would have believed no us. Phone? Joining us now to analyze this coverage, Guy Benson, political editor of Town Hall and a Fox News contributor, and back with us, Kelly Goff of the Daily Beast. So do you see a positive or perhaps a downside of a group that goes out and tries to capture on video these potential confrontations between police and minority members? I think there are arguments on both sides, but on balance, I think it's a good thing because this is accountability and it's sunlight. I'm an advocate and I think it's reasonable, and people on all sides of this can agree that maybe body cameras are a good idea for police for these types of things to be adjudicated and the facts to come out ultimately. But so long as that is not a common practice across the entire country, I can understand why people want video evidence, especially if it comes down otherwise to he said versus he or she said. Which is what it used to be before cell phone cameras became ubiquitous. Uh, your thoughts on this, Kelly? Well, the Alton Sterling case in Louisiana showed us the limits of body cameras, right? Because allegedly they became dislodged during the tussle, at least that's what's being reported. Uh -huh. But I think that yes, uh, social media and um, the mediacy of video has completely changed the game. Now because, as I said, I think the Walter Scott shooting in South Carolina officially changed the game because the video so contradicted the officer's version of events, and that's what led to the Time Magazine's groundbreaking cover of This Time It's Murder, and it had Black Lives Matter as the cover. I think because of that, now because of video, it's completely changed the conversation. It's made it easier to hold law enforcement, but also journalistic outlets uh, to higher accountability in terms of their coverage. When white police officers in this small, tiny minority of cases shoot a black man in the back, as in South Carolina, as Kelly just mentioned, or essentially choke him to death, as in Staten Island, or kill a guy selling CDs in Louisiana, do the media use that, some in the media, I should say, to stereotype the vast majority of law-abiding officers as trigger-happy or racist? Yeah, I mean, you definitely see that. And that's why I think you've seen politicians, to their credit, it's been a weird week where the politicians across the board have mostly behaved well and conducted themselves and comported themselves well, saying, let's not paint with an overly broad brush when there's so much heightened sensitivity. Of course, the vast, vast, vast majority of police officers never behave this way, don't do anything when it, that rises to this level of misconduct, which doesn't take away from the fact that sometimes they do and need to be held accountable. That doesn't mean that there's you know, this war by police on black people that is so pervasive that it's a huge societal problem. And the cruel irony in Dallas is that these officers were protecting the right of the protesters to free speech to demonstrate against them. But when some black activists say things like pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, do people in the black community and journalists in the black community need to condemn that as well. So we don't hear much of that. Well, you know, I looked at the Drudge headline, which said, you know, Black Lives Matter kills. But I thought to myself, we just had black a- Black Lives Kill. Black yeah. Lives Kill. And, and, he, and we here we have a former congressman who happens to be white Joe Walsh, who tweeted a threat at the president. I doubt that they would have run a headline that said, Congress killed. I think that we, we as again, in media, need to, to own our responsibility in terms of how we're covering all this and try to do our part to tell stories responsibility instead of he heightening rhetoric and heightening the temperature. And I do think that we're moving in that direction. I mean, seeing Newt Gingrich get so much coverage for his statement saying, none of us will understand what it's like to be black in America. Seeing the coverage again that Snoop Dogg the rapper and the game the rapper standing shoulder to shoulder with the LAPD. I really do think and hope, Howard, that this week is the turning point where we in media finally get the message that we're all in this country together and we all have a responsibility to do our part to see America be as great as, right. as it can be. Quick answers here. So are the media finally, or at least many in the media, becoming more enlightened about the racial sensitivities in these awful cases of violence? on both sides? It seems so, yes, and I certainly hope so. Uh, Matt Lewis, conservative columnist for The Daily Caller, says that in the digital age, he calls this a confession. It's hard to come to any other conclusion that police brutality toward African Americans is a pervasive problem going on for generations. Do you think that white journalists are finally becoming more sensitive to this, perhaps in the past have dismissed this as uh, complaining about white cops? In a word, yes. Video makes it now impossible for people to ignore the problem, but diversity in newsrooms is also changing things. And you know what else, Howard? Our country is becoming more diverse than that. Mixed race families are the fastest growing demographic. I've had white friends who've come to me and asked for my own stories about being racially profiled. That's what really changes things is when our culture starts to embrace each other. Diversity in the media is a great point because it was different 30 years ago. Kelly Goff, Guy Benson, thanks very much for stopping by this Sunday.